We provide disposal for nearly 3 million residents in Miami-Dade County, collection of waste management for over 350,000. Once it's collected, what happens next? That's the magic that we need to make sure that our residents understand. There's an evolution right now that's happening right before our eyes. And no longer is it just pick it up at the curb and dump it in the landfill. It's pick it up at the curb, take it to the waste energy facility, compost it, recycle it. We actually have a zero waste master plan to help us to figure out how do we go forward. Today we're excited to have with us Dr. Anisha Daniel, the head of the Department of Solid Waste Management for Miami-Dade County. We're going to have a great discussion about waste management. Here at Opportunity Miami, we believe that sustainability is the biggest challenge that we're facing as a community today, but it's also the biggest economic opportunity. And we're so excited to have Dr. Daniel with us. She's an expert that brings more than 25 years of experience in leadership in public sector. Dr. Daniel, welcome to, to, to the Miami-Dade Beacon Council and Opportunity Miami. Thank you for having me. We're glad to have you. So let's hop right in. All right, let's do it. When you're talking about waste and waste management, a lot of people don't really think about their trash. They just throw it out, you know, and they're like, okay, I throw it out, and it magically disappears. But for those who are unfamiliar with this topic, can you share a little bit about what the practice of waste management is all about and how you all think about it at Miami-Dade County? Sure. I have the privilege to serve as a director for Miami-Dade County Department of Solid Waste Management. And, you know, when we, like you said, when you think about trash, garbage, most folks just think that garbage can go to the curb and it just magically disappear, but there's so much more to it. Our mission is to make sure that we provide safe, efficient, and sustainable waste management while striving for long-term environmental um, solutions. We provide um, disposal for nearly three million residents in Miami-Dade County. Um, and we actually also provide collection of waste management for over 350,000. So that's called collection services as well as recycling services. And you know, it's important when we're thinking about that because once it's collected, what happens next? That's the magic that we need to talk about. That's the magic that we need to make sure that our residents understand. What's that process once you throw something in the garbage? What happens from there? So what happens next? You know, we have, um, like I said, 350,000 cust plus customers. They roll their cart out to the, to the curb and we have our truck drivers that pick them up. We have transfer stations. And so we have three transfer stations within our system, which provides us an ease for logistics as well as an opportunity to clear up those routes at a reasonable time throughout the day. And so once they pick them up, then they actually then take them to their final destination. That final destination is the landfill. For us, we have two landfills. We have a, one in South Dade and one in North Dade. Two years ago, we did have an additional component to our system, and that was our waste energy facility, where we would have the opportunity to dispose of many, uh, over half of our tons there, over a million tons there, and um, actually process energy from that. But today, it's either going to the landfill or it's going to get long hauled out through some of our private haulers um, and they take them to central Florida um, and that is usually going either on long, long haul through trucks or waste by rail. As a county, water and waste generate about 4% of the greenhouse gas emissions. On average, a resident produces just over a ton of garbage mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to climate impact, that's just a small fraction compared to transportation, which mm -hmm. is 55%, and our built environment, which is 44%. Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't mean that it's insignificant. So can you explain a little bit about, you know, how we uh, see, you know, reducing the impact of kind of the greenhouse gas emissions from waste over time? Sure. Um, it is our mayor's mission to make sure that we have a sustainable system in a sustainable county um, through her Thrive 305. And so some of the things that we're doing in solid waste is, one, looking at how we can actually do waste diversion. Waste diversion is something that we really need to focus in on, making sure that we are diverting our waste, not just at the landfill, but figuring out how to utilize more of our, more of our waste to recycling. Um, if we have our residents take more of the tons and as opposed to throwing it in the garbage, they actually are recycling those items that can be recycled, then we actually have an opportunity to have a, a reuse of some of those actual particles or, or, or pieces that we our folks are throwing out. Uh, beyond that, there are so many other systems and we actually have a zero waste master plan that we're working towards right now. That zero waste master plan is going to provide us with all the information we need to know to help us to figure out how do we go forward. What are the innovative technologies and solutions we can be utilizing in our 
our system. And we've met with many of these, um, of the individuals that are bringing forward all these innovative technologies, but there's anaerobic tech, um, digestion, um, there is recycling, uh, which by the way, when we talk about recycling, in Bybee Day County, um, we have a, a we have a job to do there by making sure that we can improve that. Um, our residents are, you know, we just need to help them with education. So we're doing a rebranding right now on our recycling program to make sure that folks understand what can and what cannot be recycled. Um, but beyond that, making sure they understand the benefits, um, the long-term benefits, the environmental benefits, because when we folks think about, they don't think about an environmental benefit, an economic benefit, and a social benefit when they're thinking about solid waste. But it is actually all three of those things. But from an environmental perspective, those greenhouse gases that we're talking about and being able to recycle and reuse some of the, um, the, the material that is actually being thrown out. And from a social impact, making sure we're educating our residents. Our residents, if they're educated from as early as elementary, then the young folks will be able to help the red, their, their parents um, explain what should be recycled, what can't be recycled. Because we all know our kids will tell us, right? Mm -hmm. Don't throw that in there, that doesn't go there. And so that's one of the things that I'm hoping to do a little bit more of pushing education and outreach in our schools and pushing education and outreach in our communities so that we can do a lot better there. So you talked about the environmental, the economic, mm -hmm. and, uh, and all of these kinds of impacts. Could you lean in a little bit on the economic side of it? Of course, at Beacon Council, we're about jobs mm -hmm. and growing the economy, but mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. looks like every week mm -hmm. I, see new, um, I see new technologies coming out. Mm -hmm. I see always there's interesting and innovative things happening. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the, the economic opportunities we're seeing uh, to, for in, in, in the business of waste management? So, so recycling programs, um, one of the things that we're doing is we're trying to um, deal with, work with some of the businesses that are out there um, and find out how we can work with them. Um, right now we're exploring um, a uh, construction and demolition, I was about to say the acronyms and <laughs> I have to remember, no, I have to say the full word, not C and D, but um, looking at that and, and trying to figure out how we can work with some of our end users, um, but composting, um, looking at that business and working with the um, some of the, the folks out there in the community and haulers, then there's all of the different technologies and, and just creating green jobs, creating green jobs in the in this space where there may not be in some instances. Um, we have to look at waste a little bit different. There's an evolution right now that's happening right before our eyes. And no longer is it just pick it up at the curve and dump it in the landfill. It's pick it up at the curve, dump it in the landfill, take it to the waste energy facility, compost it, recycle it, and we can actually lo lower our long-term um, cost. Um, because as we are continuously utilizing private haulers to send it out to mid Florida and then and beyond because landfills have a life cycle. Our landfills are ending their, their life cycle. And so once we do that, then where do we do? We have to take it even further. Um, and you know, we're, this is not a Miami-Dade County problem. This is a state of Florida problem and it's even beyond that and abroad. And the U.S., at least from a reputation perspective, mm -hmm. from the people I talk to around the world say, hey, well, you know, we're really behind in some of the techniques as a country in terms of waste management. There are perhaps more innovative things that are being done in other markets or they're being more mm -hmm. progressive or uh, aggressive about tackling it. How does Miami-Dade County stack up? What are the things that we need to do to, to improve and how can business support, support you in that? That's a great question. Um, and, and when we think about how do we compare nationally, uh, you know, we're behind, but we don't have to stay behind. As you mentioned, and we started this interview, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for us to figure out how do we move forward um, and be intentional and strategic about those movements. Um, we, we know that um, waste generation is very high we produce in Miami-Dade County over five million tons. Mm -hmm. Five million. Wow. And in solid waste, we actually- Five million tons. Mm -hmm. not, by, not five million pounds. Five, five million, million tons. Per year. Yeah. Per year. Wow. In solid waste, we actually process over two million of those tons. And so when we had a waste energy facility, we had the, the ability to process half of that uh, 1.1 million tons at our waste energy facility. That facility is no longer there. And so now 
all two million tons are being landfilled, either here or abroad, you know, or, or in Central Florida. One of the things we're actually looking at is um, we're, we're trying to look at some innovative ways of doing some things is we can, if we can put a, um, a seal where folks can scan it and see to help them to understand what that they should be recycling. Waste diversion and becoming a circular economy, that is optimal for us. And that's where we really need to lean in and become there, get there. And how do we do that is by minimizing um, the waste, but then pr making sure that we're reusing our waste and that we're creating new products and reducing the reliance on um, those resources. And so that's the biggest challenge that I'm focusing in on as the new director of this department is how do we actually help us to become a circular economy? How do we uh, move towards becoming more sustainable and a resilient um, solid waste? And that evolution of, you know, being not just the old solid waste that folks used to remember, but more of an innovative solid waste that is using all of these different technologies today um, to help us to solve this problem. Because if we don't, um, health and safety become an issue. Um, we become a community where, you know, we have waste all over the place and that's not a clean place. We want to be clean. We want to be um, a community where folks want to be, um, but that's going to take us doing all of these things and more. Uh, great point. So last question. Mm -hmm. I'm asking you now to look into your crystal ball. Uh, you know, we've got a goal to be, you know, uh, at carbon neutrality by 2050. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got goals around how we manage the waste better. The year is 2040. Where are we in terms of solid waste management in Miami-Dade County and how do we get there? So let me just pull out this nice big crystal ball and think about all of the great things we'll become and we'll be a cleaner city. We will be a city that is um, reduced carbon footprint, um, sustainable, using all of the different innovative technologies as a part of our, our system and not just relying on landfills. Actually in 2040, our landfills will be closed, but Miami-Dade County will be a, a leader in sustainable waste management, I think at that point, um, helping protect our natural resources. Um, improving our public health and fostering a resilient and thriving community for generations to come. And so that's what I see 2040 looking like um, for Miami-Dade County and for all of our residents. Dr. Anisha Daniel, thank you so much for joining us here on Opportunity Miami. Hopefully you'll come back uh, and join us again. Thanks for all the great work that you're leading. We really appreciate it. Thank you.